Mount Kailash, a mountain that has captured the human imagination for millennia, stands majestically on the Tibetan plateau. Rising to an elevation of 6,638 meters, its striking form looms over the surrounding landscapes, providing a stark contrast to the serene lakes of Manasarovar and Rakshastal nestled at its base. This mountain is not just a geographical feature, it is a spiritual beacon that draws pilgrims from diverse cultural and religious backgrounds. The geographical significance of Mount Kailash is unparalleled, serving as the source of four of Asia's major rivers, the Indus, Sutlej, Brahmaputra, and Karnali. These rivers sustain millions of lives across multiple countries, further cementing the mountain's status as a life-giving entity. The surrounding region is a high-altitude plateau characterized by its rough terrain and extreme weather conditions, which only add to the mystique of this sacred peak. Revered in Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and the Bon religion, the mountain is a testament to the confluence of faiths. Each religion offers its unique narrative and reverence, transforming Mount Kailash into a universal symbol of spiritual pursuit. This intersection of beliefs at a single geographic point is a rare phenomenon, highlighting the mountain's universal appeal. In Hindu mythology, Mount Kailash is profoundly significant as the earthly abode of Lord Shiva, one of the principal deities of the Hindu pantheon. Lord Shiva, known as the destroyer and transformer within the Trimurti, is believed to reside on this sacred mountain along with his consort Parvati and their sons, Ganesha and Kartikeya. The mountain's association with Shiva is not just about his residence. It represents a spiritual center, the axis of the universe, Mount Meru, where the divine connects with the earthly realm. Devotees believe that the mountain is imbued with Shiva's energy, making it a powerful place of worship and pilgrimage. In Jain tradition, Mount Kailash holds a special place of reverence, particularly associated with the first Tirthankara Rishabhanatha. According to Jain beliefs, Rishabhanatha attained moksha or liberation on this sacred mountain, making it a pivotal site in Jain spirituality. It is said that his son, Emperor Bharata, built three stupas and 24 shrines adorned with precious stones in the area, naming it Sinnishta. These structures, although not physically present today, are significant in Jain lore, emphasizing the mountain's sanctity and the ancient Jain king's devotion. Jain mythology also recounts that the 24th Tirthankara Mahavira was taken to the summit of Mount Meru, often identified with Mount Kailash, by Indra shortly after his birth. There he was bathed and anointed, a ritual that signifies purification and divine blessing. In Buddhism, Mount Kailash is revered as an earthly manifestation of the mythological Mount Meru, central to Buddhist cosmology. This sacred mountain is not only a physical peak, but also a spiritual axis, believed to be a source of profound spiritual energy. Among the many Buddhist figures associated with Mount Kailash, Guru Padmasambhava and Milarepa stand out prominently, their stories enhancing the mountain's sacred aura. His tantric practices and teachings deeply influenced Tibetan Buddhism and Mount Kailash is often linked to his spiritual endeavors. Milarepa, one of the most revered Tibetan saints, is famed for his legendary contest with Nara Bon Chung, a Bon religion founder at Mount Kailash. This contest was to determine who could reach the summit first. According to the legend, Milarepa ascended the mountain on sun rays, while Nara Bon Chung used a magic drum. Milarepa's victory and his subsequent mark on a nearby peak, Bonri, for the Bond people, are celebrated in Buddhist law as a testament to his spiritual prowess and the mountain's sacred power. The narratives of Padmasambhava and Milarepa enhance the spiritual significance of Mount Kailash, making it a focal point for Buddhist devotion and pilgrimage. The Bon religion, indigenous to Tibet, holds Mount Kailash in high esteem viewing it as a sacred site of immense spiritual significance. According to Bon beliefs, the mountain is the abode of the sky goddess, Sipaimen, who is revered as a divine protector and a source of spiritual energy. 
The Bon tradition also associates Mount Kailash with Tonpa Shenrab, the founder of the Bon religion, whose teachings and practices are deeply intertwined with the sacred landscape of the region. Tonpa Shenrab is regarded as a great spiritual teacher who brought the Bon teachings to the world. The Bonpos, followers of the Bon religion, believe that circumambulating Mount Kailash counterclockwise, unlike the clockwise path taken by Hindus, Buddhists and Jains, aligns with their spiritual path and brings them closer to the divine. The Bon tradition views Mount Kailash as a cosmic center, a place where the earthly and divine realms intersect. This belief is reflected in the rituals and practices performed during the pilgrimage. Bonpos engage in elaborate rituals and prayers, seeking the blessings of Sipaiman and Tompa Shenrab. These rituals are believed to cleanse the soul, purify the mind, and bring spiritual enlightenment, emphasizing the mountain's role as a conduit for divine energy. The Kora, or circumambulation, around Mount Kailash is a pilgrimage of profound spiritual significance. This journey covers approximately 53 kilometers and is typically completed over three days. The Kora begins and ends at the small outpost of Darchan, which sits at an impressive altitude of 15,320 feet. For many pilgrims, the journey is both a physical and spiritual challenge, demanding a combination of endurance, faith, and devotion. The first leg of the Kora takes pilgrims from Darkin to Diraput Gompa, a distance of about 18 kilometers. This section of the journey provides breathtaking views of the north face of Mount Kailash. As they walk, they chant prayers and spin prayer wheels, immersing themselves in the sacred environment. On the second day, the most challenging part of the trek begins. Pilgrims climb to the Kora's highest point, the Drolma Pass, which reaches an elevation of 18,540 feet. This ascent is steep and strenuous, and the thin air makes breathing difficult. Pilgrims leave items representing their sins and past sorrows at the top of the pass, believing that doing so will aid in their spiritual purification and renewal. Pilgrims descend from the Droma Pass to Zutulfuk, where they will spend the night. The serene environment of Zutulfuk allows for contemplation and spiritual connection, which adds to the pilgrimage's transformative experience the final leg of the Kora returns pilgrims to Darchen, completing the circular route around Mount Kailash. The pilgrimage around Mount Kailash is rich in rituals and spiritual practices which add to the sacred journey. One of the most significant practices is full body prostration, a strenuous form of devotion performed by the most devout pilgrims. This ritual consists of lying flat on the ground with arms outstretched, marking the location and then moving forward to lie flat again. This type of Kora can take up to three weeks to complete, but it is thought to yield enormous spiritual benefits. Another common ritual involves the spinning of prayer wheels, which are frequently carried by Buddhist pilgrims. As the prayer wheels spin, they send prayers into the universe, dispersing blessings and positive energy. The repetitive motion of spinning the wheels aids in maintaining a meditative state, allowing pilgrims to focus on their spiritual journeys. Prayer flags are also an integral part of the pilgrimage. These colorful flags inscribed with prayers and mantras are strung across pathways, mountain passes, and sacred sites. As the wind blows, it carries the prayers to the heavens, spreading peace, compassion, and wisdom. At various points along the Kora, pilgrims engage in rituals specific to their faith. Hindu pilgrims may perform puja worship and pray to Lord Shiva for blessings. Buddhists can chant mantras and make offerings at Padmasambhava and Milarepa's shrines. Bonpos follow their tradition by performing rituals to honor the sky goddess Sipaimen and seeking guidance from Tompa Shenrab. These diverse practices highlight the pilgrimage's rich spiritual tapestry in which people of various faiths come together to honor Mount Kailash. They assist pilgrims in connecting with the divine, seeking forgiveness, and experiencing spiritual growth. The physical act of performing these rituals, combined with the arduous journey of the Kora, results in a powerful spiritual experience that pilgrims remember long after they leave the sacred mountain. The political landscape surrounding Mount Kailash has a significant impact on the accessibility and experience of the pilgrimage. Because the mountain is located at the intersection of China, India and Nepal, 
Geopolitical dynamics have a significant impact on how and when pilgrims can make the journey. Changes in border policies, diplomatic relations and visa regulations can help or hinder the pilgrimage. The Indian government organizes official pilgrimages to Mount Kailash, facilitating travel via two main routes, the Lipu Lek Pass in Uttarakhand and the Nathula Pass in Sikkim. Nepal also has an important role in the pilgrimage, with many pilgrims beginning their journey in the Humla district of northwestern Nepal. Since the Tatopani crossing was damaged by an earthquake in 2015, the Rasua Kirong border crossing has grown in importance. Despite these political complexities, the pilgrimage to Mount Kailash remains a testament to the power of faith and the human spirit.